Are you a practice owner, whether you're brand new or you've been doing this for a while and you are wondering how is the best way that I can get my name out there because I would like clients as soon as possible. If that's you, then this is a video to watch. So in this video, we are going to be going over how to build awareness around your practice, around your business, around your brand, how to get your name out there and start talking to people so that you can start filling your caseload as soon as possible. If you are new here, or if we haven't met before, my name is Morgan and I'm a physical therapist and a business coach for other healthcare providers just like me who want to start and grow a successful solo practice and work for themselves full time so that they can leave the clinic grind behind. And if that is you, then you are in the right place. Um, you're in good company because here on this channel, I share everything that I've learned in the past few years since starting my own practice with you so that you can learn how to do this as well. If you are wanting to start or grow your practice and you're looking for help and guidance, we have a ton of resources on my website at morganmeese.com. And we are currently working with practice owners just like you through our DPT to CEO program, which is available for not just DPTs, but also we've worked with OTs, uh, speech therapists, chiropractors, fitness coaches, and athletic trainers now as well to grow your own business. So if you're looking for coaching, for guidance, that kind of a thing, definitely check out the website morganmeese.com and visit the page on the CEO program to get more info on how that all works. So let's get into this video. So when you are a practice and a business, how do you get your name out there and make yourself visible and known so that patients and clients start coming to you and wanting to work with you. One of the biggest myths out there, I think, or just, you know, like a lim sort of a limiting belief, but maybe I think it just comes from like a lot of us as he healthcare providers, practitioners, we don't really have a background in marketing and business. Most of us don't like, I think like the most that some of us have is maybe like one, one class or two in, in school. But other than that, everybody pretty much starts at the same place at bottom level, level zero with regards to marketing. And so like, I think that's where this like myth kind of comes from is that we think as a new practice, all that we really have to do is put up a website, get a business phone number, file paperwork for your business entity, start the practice, and then all of a sudden the patients will come flooding in. And that is not the case. Just because you make a website doesn't mean anybody will see it at all. It, it takes time for websites to really get picked up by Google and for people to find it on social media, you know. And so one like kind of side note, if you are worried about publishing your website because you don't have XYZ like in place yet with the practice or you're worried about clients finding you, you can go ahead and publish the website. Nobody is going to find it immediately. It's going to take time. So go ahead and publish it. But just because you publish it, that doesn't mean like that all of a sudden the patients are going to come flocking to you. You actually have to do a little bit more um, in terms of getting yourself out there and creating more awareness around your business for people to start inquiring about your services. We have a lot more work to do. And in this video, we are going to be discussing three different like simple in-person or manual ways to work on getting your name out there and building awareness in order to drive traffic to your business, as well as four different options for digital or online ways to, to build awareness. There are tons of different ways to do this. And so these are just some examples. And my hope is that by sharing these examples with you, they feel actionable and approachable. And there's things that you theoretically could get started on today or tomorrow and work on this week. They're not things that you really have to wait a long time to try to figure out how to do with the exception of maybe one, which we will talk about when we get to it. And in this video, we're going over the process of building awareness because this is the first step in creating a comprehensive marketing strategy. If you missed it, um, one of the last videos that I just did was going over the entire process of like a 30,000 foot view of what it means to create a marketing strategy and the different steps and pieces that are involved with that. So if you missed that video, I'll leave the link down below and you can check it out as well as the marketing playlist that we have here on. So let's talk about simple 
in-person manual strategies to get yourself out there, get your name out there, which is what a lot of us hope to do um, and start to build awareness. So the first thing that you can do is uh, it falls under the category of direct outreach and networking and tiny like promo plug here. One of my favorite ways to do this is through something called the 100 challenge, which is a major component of the DPT to CEO program, but it is also available as a mini course on my website. And in this challenge, it creates a very structured, tangible, um, approachable way to start learning how to do direct outreach and networking, whether it's in person, online, what have you. And it teaches you how to go about talking to people about you and your business to promote it without feeling like icky or weird or, you know, worrying about feeling like an imposter. So for more information, check it out on the website and there will be a link down in the description as well. But essentially the 100 challenge is reaching out to and talking to a hundred people. And a great way to get started with this is to make a goal for yourself of talking to five to 10 people a day. If that feels like way, way too many, you can always scale it down. Like, like we do in CrossFit, you can always modify things and scale the exercises so that they are doable for you. That's a good place to start. You know, if you're starting from scratch and want patients ASAP, trying to talk to contact and have a conversation with five to 10 people a day over the course of 10 to 30 days is going to help you gain a ton of momentum. And by the end of that time, you know, even if you only do the 100 repetitions, the 100 contacts, 100 people are going to know that you are in business and accepting clients. And that is far more than if, you know, you just publish a website and sit back and wait for the phone to ring and wait for the, the emails to come in. One of the pieces that I really want everybody to know when they are first getting started with a business is that you need to take initiative for a while and getting yourself out there and doing your marketing, you have to create the momentum yourself that you are hoping to see with eventually like patients and clients finding you and inquiring on their own. And so this is a great way to do that because it's very simple. You know, and it is not anything like crazy, super technologically difficult. All you have to do is attempt to contact a hundred people. And that's what the 100 challenge is. And for as far as like who to talk to, um, because that's a question that I get to, I always suggest if you're like really, really nervous and worried about it, start with friends and family, like people that are close to you that you trust and just practice talking to them about it. They can still count as part of your 100 challenge, but you can practice talking about your business before you start talking to strangers and reaching like outside um, that inner circle, if that feels comfortable for you. For some people, it's more comfortable to reach out to strangers before they tell friends and family, but either way, you can start with one of those groups and get going with your outreach. And then to get more specific with things, you can talk to people who might need the type of help that you are offering, or you can talk to people who might know other people who would need the type of help that you are offering. It's always a great idea to talk to other providers who are both inside and outside of your niche. So like, I always love to speak with other physical therapists that work with CrossFitters and that work in the pelvic health realm. I think it's great to find colleagues that are doing the same thing, but it's also really awesome to talk to other providers who are totally outside that realm, whether they are, you know, outside physical therapy or outside of like health, fitness, pelvic health stuff. It's great to get a different perspective. And I always think like clinically, it's good to have a list of people that you can refer your own patients to or refer like people who are inquiring at your business. You can refer them out elsewhere to people that you actually do know and like and can, you know, offer like a true testimonial for. So I think that that is always a good idea. And you can reach out to providers in your local area. I think that's a great idea, especially if you are a local like in-person business. It can be in the same state and it can also be across the country. That's totally fair, you know, to build your network across the country, even globally. So don't feel like you have to 
only talk to people in your local area, you can reach outside of it too. But something to keep in mind is that if you are focusing on like local in-person business and finding clients that way, it's probably the best place to start and you can always expand past that. So that is the first first thing that we can do to build awareness is surprise, tell people <laughs> about the business. You know, and it, it sounds simple. It can be a little bit intimidating at first. And I know I have a blog post on uh, getting past imposter syndrome as well. So definitely check that out. Option number two, building awareness it sort of goes off of the last point, but one of my like favorite, like little ways that you can get going. And we talked about this in the video about marketing for your cross gym is canvassing the neighborhood. So you can go and talk to your neighbors, go introduce yourself, make friends with people in the neighborhood. You can hand out flyers offering, you know, whatever discounts or like special offers uh, for your services and your business to your neighbors, canvas your neighborhood, the surrounding neighborhoods, surrounding neighborhoods and surrounding towns, you know, you can continue to expand that probably just within your service radius, but just good old fashioned door knocking. They talk about that all the time on the real estate reality shows that I watch. And it's, I, I love this option because it's, again, it's not fancy. It's something that you can start doing today or tomorrow, you know, or even next week if you want to wait for your flyers to get printed. And again, the flyers don't have to be super fancy. It just needs to be clear, you know, your name, your business, what you offer, what solutions you have to offer for what problems and like how to contact you in potentially a special offer or something for neighbors. But that, that's pretty much it. And besides like canvassing the neighborhood, we can also uh, go hang up flyers at coffee shops. I know I see bulletin boards at the Starbucks around here all the time or other local coffee shops, restaurants, things like that rec centers, look for different like community places where you can put up information about your business and talk to people at those businesses about what, what it is that you, you offer in your business, you know, and with between the two of these things, you will be very busy for at least 30 to 60 days reaching out to people. So those are great things to do. And option number three, continuing to talk to people and getting to know other people in your community is participating in events. You can participate in events by um, offering workshops, potentially like the local gyms or at other businesses uh, in the area. You can be a vendor at events or a sponsor of events and like post up at a table. And whether you're just offering information or offering services, whatever it is, you can be there as you know, a vendor and uh, a sponsor of the event. But something else that also works really well is participating in events, like as an athlete, for example, it will show that you are potentially like part of the group that you are wanting to work with, like runners, profit athletes, power lifters. If you participate in mommy and me classes, things like that. Those are just like some examples of things that like I've done and my clients have done as well. And like, obviously there's tons of other options. Rock climbing nights. You can go and participate in them as like a regular person rather than trying to be like the business version of yourself and get to know people on a person to person level. And that can be a great way to, to do outreach and uh, networking as well. So those are like three different ways that you can get started ASAP and getting your name out there and building awareness around your business. And as we'll talk about in the next section, then a great way to continue that and like take it one step further is as you're talking to people, you can always refer them to your website or your Instagram. It might be a good idea to refer them to your Instagram just because then they can follow you and continue to see your journey as you are posting more and sharing more about your business. You can follow them back, engage with their stuff. Website is good too, if you just kind of want to share a little bit more information about your practice. And then we have some different ways that we can build awareness and drive traffic online for your business. And number one thing that we can do, which is so it's accessible to everybody is posting content, like literally anything. I talk about this all the time with the students in the business coaching program. When it comes to content creation, there are so many levels that you can go up as far as like how advanced you can be with your content. And like the ground floor level is just put something, post anything, because done is better than not done. Something is better than nothing. And just starting there, 
that's fine. You know, like if the biggest like barrier to you is you just you don't know what to post or what to share, just share something about you and post it. Maybe something about the business would be even better. But that is like level one. And then from there, you can continue to take steps up, you know, on like a weekly, monthly basis where you are actively learning more about content creation and strategy, creating a plan around what it is that you are posting. But we just have to do something rather than nothing. And over time, your efforts and time spent on social media platforms, they are going to stack up you're going to get better at it. People are going to find you. And it gives you a really great opportunity to engage with people in your audience and build relationships the same way that you might at like local events. So just post something. Uh, if you're a local business, make sure that you use the location features, and location tags, and things like that. And that will help you stay within the local area. Option number two, boosting your content. So this is a little bit more advanced. Like I said, we want to at least like just post anything. Then we want to try to post things that will appeal to our audience and what they're there for. We want to post content that appeals to potential customers as well. So getting a little bit better with our content creation and our topics. And then you can use a feature typically on like Instagram and Facebook is what I'm really referencing with this, but I'm sure that there are ways to do this on other platforms if you're involved there, where you can boost those posts to your local area as a local business so that they're going to be seen more and your profile gets seen more. So people are more likely to follow you. You create more opportunities to engage with people in your community and it only goes up from there. So that can be a great option as well. Number three, content collaborations. I have been telling every person that I work with about this and it's something that I have used myself a little bit this year is doing content collaborations with other businesses on Instagram. And I think this would just be like another layer to add to the relationship building with other providers in your area. If you know, you guys meet up and feel like you click and then you can do a content collaboration together on Instagram. Instagram has a feature now where you can be a collaborator on a post. And if you and another profile are collaborators on a post, that post will be put on your profile, on their profile, and shown to both audiences. So it's a great way for you to extend your reach. You can provide value to two different audiences, and both you and the other provider get content out of it. So it's it's a win-win situation for both businesses. As long as you guys are both trying to do content, I think it's a great option. And it's something you can continue to do on a regular basis. I was working with my gym for a while, creating content around one of the services I was offering in my physical therapy practice. I worked with True Coach as well um, to create uh, collaborative content there, which is really cool. Shout out to True Coach because it's like the best home exercise program tool that I, I have found. Love that. So content collaboration can be a great way to expand your reach online and continue to grow your awareness. And lastly, the fourth option is running ads, paid advertising on social media. This is an advanced skill. I would not recommend starting out with running paid advertising. You really need to have a clear offer and a clear understanding of what your service is and how it works, as well as a good sales process and proof of concept through people opting in and choosing to purchase your services before you start running ads. You know, unless you have just like a chunk of change sitting around that you don't mind totally burning um, in pursuit of exploring and learning paid ads, you should have a little bit more proof of concept and a little bit more of a foundation in your business before you begin running paid advertising. But I love paid advertising. I think it's awesome, especially for solo business owners, because it is a great way for you to continue to grow awareness, create engagement, bring people onto your email list, create opportunities for sales conversions 24 seven without you constantly having to create content. I personally think the best like digital marketing strategy is a mix of paid and content or organic, but running ads can really be super, super helpful for just making your marketing as efficient as possible. So don't shy away from them, but also definitely caution if you were like, this is your first week in business, we need proof of concept, 
get at least a couple of clients first, and then we can look into paid advertising. So I just, I want you to know, I know I just, I hear so many people get all anxious and worried when they're first starting their practice or trying to grow. And they are thinking that they need to get their name out there, but they, they just like don't know what to do. These are seven different options of ways that you can get your name out there. And there are tons more, you know, you have so much control over getting your name out there and um, telling people about your business and spreading the word. If you find yourself sitting by the phone, like just waiting for it to ring, then we're doing something wrong. <laughs> we need to be doing something else in order to get yourself out there and building relationships with people and building awareness around your business. And like last thing to keep in mind with all of this too, is none of this is like a quick fix overnight situation. They are things that you are going to have to stay consistent with over time. You know, like we're talking months, quarters to like years of doing these things consistently in order to start to see consistent results. If your input is really inconsistent, the output is also going to be really inconsistent, just like pretty much anything that we work on. So, you know, it is a lot of work. I'm not going to, you know, say anything differently on that. It's a lot of work, but all of that work is with the intention of growing a business that makes you happy, you know, and serves you with the life that you really want to have. And so I know for me, it's worth it. I hope that this all helps, you know, leave questions, comments down below. And like I said at the beginning, if you want help starting growing your own successful solo practice as a healthcare provider and working for yourself full time instead of working for somebody else and having all of the time flexibility in the world, definitely apply for our business coaching program, DPT to CEO. And I will be happy to talk with you about your goals, um, what you're wanting to do and put it in the right direction. But other than that, I'll see you on the next video.